It's Tabletop Time. I'm Jen. I'm Dave. I'm Jazza. I'm new here. I'm also Lachlan. <laughs> <laughs> and we're very excited because I finally get to play some 40k roleplay. Oh, yeah, we this do. This the second time on the channel, first time on the new one? The... For 40k, oh, yes, we did Battlefleet Gothic. Yeah. Uh, but that was a long time ago. I've been begging for 40k constantly, uh, and we do a lot of patron voted one shots, and our lovely patrons uh, seem to vote for other things. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just running a 40k one shot because yeah. we're going to be tying this into our kill team game. Yay! So oh, this yay. outside this room, Dave and Jen and Murray have been working on a kill team board, which will be basically a representation of the world we're playing in. This is a prequel to the kill team board, not so a prequel to the kill team game. Yeah. It's a prequel to the setting <laughs> for the kill team game. Love this is so oh. exciting. Like this is the the interconnected oh. way we can mix everything we love about our hobby and make it all a big moment. So exciting. Yeah. Extremely pumped. I see where this is going and I'm no longer confident in my character's life expectancy. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, I, uh, there are no preconceptions about... Yeah, don't get attached. There yeah. is definitely a preconception about the end state of the situation that we'll, we'll, we'll get to that point and I know we'll end up in that point. But there's no preconception on how well you do, how well if things we turn survive, out, if yeah. you survive, if you don't... Even you can have positive or negative impacts on the world, of mm. course. But regardless, the the place is going to be as it is when, for for reasons. That being said, I hold the record for the most alive characters. <laughs> you do. <laughs> do you? You've only died like twice ever. Because Declan stayed alive. For Declan the... isn't dead. Yep. From yeah. the forty k one yeah. shot. Yep. Confirmed. And there's a couple of others as well that have survived um, in the you, Genesis characters. Am I the most dead? I think so. <laughs> yeah, you, I think you and Rob are probably on par. You, you, <laughs> Rob's you had a few. You did die in the yeah. uh, Resident Evil one shot, I believe. Or yeah, turned. no, I did die. Yeah, she yeah. did. Uh, she turned into a zombie. So, yep, confirmed for off-screen death. Yeah, I'm still, still running. <laughs> is that I, who else you know, got this So, this is off-topic. I re-listened to Seraphim. I'm like... I had it out for Gabe. I'm like, he, he is not dead. I'm so yeah, sorry. Yeah, he's so not dead. Yeah. I'm like, this is awful. And I'm like, look, it's I'm been the largest friend. I'm not dead. It's, <laughs> pretty, it's been long enough that I can now say it was really funny because at the time I, I just was like, go with the DM. Yeah. But I, you were like, you're going to fall and you're going to take like a level three injury. And I'm like, can I like make an acrobatics check to, to like try and make that better? And then I made the acrobatics check. And it it wasn't a, great. But it wasn't. But then you were like, he's dead now. And I was like... <laughs> What? <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm so sorry. I did a back I flip and back landed on my neck. <laughs> it was my first time back narrating after a yeah. long time. I was like going for dramatic story, but I, I've I've got to redeem that one day. I'm just putting <laughs> that out there. I am so sorry. You took it like a champ. <laughs> oh, you got to go with the damn. But I was kind of like, uh, good. So I'm, oh, I'm nice. open to there being some karma in this chapter is what I'm saying. Okay. okay. <laughs> All right. Well, this, I, this is... I want to enjoy... Um, the power not going out in a 40k one shot, so we won't have the power going okay. out. Okay. Are we ready? Let's yeah. do it. Welcome, everyone. Uh, we are on the planet Atov PC9, located in the Ultima Segmentum of Imperial Space. The year is M41998, according to the current chronometers. Atov PC9 is an icy hellhole. The system was lost to the Imperium due to warp storms concealing it for thousands of years. But when Imperium Nihilus tore a great rift between the galaxy, a, a chasming hole into hell that has thrown half of the galaxy into turmoil, desperation, and cut them off from the Imperium proper and holy terror and the Astronomicon, Warp storms went into flux. There was kind of like a big ripple that exploded across space and some storms that had been for thousands of years dissipated, but in the most part, more were created or shifted. But in the bargain, one system happened to have been revealed that has been hidden for a long time, and that is the system of Atov. PC-9 is the designation of... Uh, you're actually on a moon. It's not a planet, but okay. it's the ninth moon of a gas giant. Cool. Um, okay. And... You, that there has been an expedition here that has lasted for about 10 years. You're in the 10th year. Now, this system uh, is on the eastern fringe of the galaxy. Uh, it's on the edge of what would be ultramarine space. And it's actually near a place called the Damocles Gulf. <clears throat> um, a bit, bit far away from that, but it's in that area of space. Now, 
for 10 years, a mining operation has been on this planet trying to mine up the most valuable thing the Imperium can find, which is technology. For there is evidence of an Imperial or human culture, a proto-culture on this planet that has been there for thousands of years. Um, the operation has largely been to excavate it from rock and ice, but over 10 years, the resources have dwindled. The Imperium has deemed it lower and lower priority as no finds of any technological value have come up. In fact, at this 10th year, most of the planet has been turned over to strip mining for the Imperial War Machine as there are some raw me rare metals and materials on the world that are worth claiming for the War Machine. There is no longer much faith that there is any technological um, benefit. However... Not one to abandon all sense of exploration. Uh, you are members, our players are members of one of the last expeditionary arms that are in one of the northern poles of the planet, digging out a city that has currently been unexplored and trying to find that technology. Um, you don't know the name of the city, of course, because it is an ancient city. Um, and the base you've been operating out of for the better part of six months is simply known to you as home. Now, we'll open our session in an icy tunnel. Dust falls from old debris frozen into the roof. The stonework and pillars of this civilization that you would put at a Middle Ages level of technology is twisted and bowed with the glacial shifting of the ice. And some of the ceilings and structures are warped impossibly. Uh, if the ice was frozen, they would fall. But of course, being frozen into glacier, they've kind of broken and shifted so that you have these weird twi like bent columns at sideways with the roof shifted with the glacier that still is solid where you've mined out between them. And we open with Bron. Bron, how would you describe yourself as you uh, set a charge in this corridor? Oh, Bron, I'd describe myself as, uh, well, a space marine. <clears throat> Should have been at least. Uh, my favourite colour's blue and I wear it at every opportunity. Because uh, I'm a ultramarine at art. Gilliman just missed a boat with me. Um, in uh, Out of Character, Bron is a large... All brawn, no brain. <laughs> um, bald and very uh, muscular um, excavationist. He's a demolitions expert. He's been doing this his whole life. Uh, when he was a child, he always dreamed of, of joining the Ultramarines, becoming a space marine. And he actually had a childhood friend that he was somewhat associated with who became one, but he missed out. So all his life is sort of resented that and felt both sort of pining after and, and desperately like admiring the space marines as gods and and uh wished he could be one but also deep down really resents them really feels like they they think they're better than us and it, like if he really dug deep that's where he'd get but he believes and acts in such a way that he loves them and really is one at heart but he'll respect them and it's uh, you know it's, it's just a lot of there's a lot of bitterness there He's very, he's very large. He wears a lot of blue overalls and sort of a lot of mechanical sort of stuff. He's got a big bag with some sort of metal pouches with different explosives. Um, and he carries around what looks like to the layperson a machete, like a large sort of, well, a large, large knife or a small like sword, uh, which is a space marine dagger that his childhood friend, it was sort of broken, but one day on the march passing, I guess he must have been recognised and it was going to be thrown in the fire anyway, so he just threw it to the side as the only point of recognition that he's ever had with that person he grew up with. Um, but he treasures it as his connection to the space marines, that thing that connects him to what he wished he could become. Mm. So he's got this really damaged space marine pear knife. <laughs> <Cool>. <clears throat> Are you going to stare at that knife all day? Are you going to do some work, Bron? A bald rattling who's standing in the corner, hands on his hips, uh, leaning against a crawl space he's just finished wiring explosives at, uh, leans back at you and kind of mock mocks you. You're friends. You've been, you've been knowing each other for some time. All right, all right, Curly. Just don't get too jealous because you know I could be one and you couldn't. Of course, they don't take a little bastard like me into the ranks of the Space Marines. 
No. And they almost took a bastard like me. <laughs> oh, yes, of course they did. I revere you like uh, the Emperor's own. Now, anyway, come on, get back to work later. Yeah, last yeah, yeah, all right. All right, so you... Go ahead about mm-hmm. my work. I get my shit done, and even though I wish I was uh, slaying Xenos and, and fighting orcs, uh, I instead am blowing up stuff for the Emperor. Did you hear they're going to pull us out of here? So what? We're at, this is the last digs. If they don't find something, they're going to pull us out of here. We're wrapping up then? Soon, within a month. Does that mean reassignment? It does, and I don't like the sound of it. I might see if I can weasel out of it. Oh, I wonder if they're looking for more combatants, eh? Uh, if you want to be conscripted into the militia, go go for it. I'm going to stay doing my work with the mines if I can. I wonder if wonder if they'd change their rules a little and, you know, take someone a little bit more grown up in this space, Marie. <laughs> Make a general knowledge check. <laughs> Challenge level three for the Imperium. Okay. I'll have two. Two for the Imperium. You're on. Ooh, you're from I, the Ultramarine yeah, segment. So I got three. In your heart of hearts, you know that once you have reached the age of about... what well, Basically, once you hit puberty, you can never be a Space Marine. It just can't happen. They will never recruit. The Ultramarines especially will never mm. recruit an adult. Never happen. I'm just living an alternate reality in my head. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right, so you plan your charge, and I'm going to get you make an explosives check, challenge level three. Let's do it. With your vocation. Cool. One, two, three, four. Cool. So you finish priming your charges. Yeah. And as you sort of walk down this lean-to corridor lit with imperial lamps and a couple of people scurry out of the way, and they realize the look that you have, that, like, it's time to press the explos- explosive detonator. Um your friend Curly keeps talking to you and he says um, <clears throat> did you hear what they found in the other tunnels they found something did they a big uh, is strange the eyes it's almost got a bit of a a taint to it it's darker it's, str- it's not like frozen water it's um, it's got a a streak of darkness running through it uh, well after all this bloody time it's about time we hit a honey pot uh, I don't know about honey it it flows like Ica when... Anyway, you'll see. We're boring right towards it now. Great. About time for some action, eh? And as you head out, you may place the detonator. How And you may detonate yeah. once you get to the safe zone. How does your character respond to detonating? It's... Uh, you play it out. It's the moment of... It's, do you know what? I'd say the reason he was drawn to explosives and all this stuff is like this little connection he has to like a bolter. This is his holy action where he can press a button and the off in the distance. It's like, he feels like he's holding the emperor's own arm and charges it. And he feel, it gives him that sense of, you know, destiny. So he charges off an explosion. All right, showtime for the emperor. Oh, they'll never get old. Snow and dust pelts down and there is a uh, a shaking of the earth that makes you feel for a moment unsettled as Victor stands in a room with an array of minerals on a tray in the ice in front of you. All right, let's see if there's anything versatile here. Something will surely not say. A man you know as, uh, as Cameron uh, walks in iron shackles holding his ankles together and his wrists together so they can't spread more than a meter he brings another tray of resources and then he kind of slumps lazily and like leans against the table for a moment as he drops them off thank you is he working you too hard again uh yes my lord Uh, you won't tell will you i just need a moment Take all the time you need, but uh, not too long, otherwise they might get suspicious. Do not take all the time you need. And you hear a crack of a stun baton activating, and you turn your head. Standing in front of you is um, Zuikova, Zuikova Pelia, one of the few and only guards that is stationed with this uh, group. She oversees the dozen or so penal servants who are here uh, serving their life sentences for minor crimes across the galaxy. They will work in these mines or mines like them until they die and they die frequently and are replaced. Um, 
They are here for crimes such as stealing food to feed their family, etc., and they are rewarded with lifelong penal service for their pious uh, begging for forgiveness. Otherwise, they would have been likely lobotomized and turned into servitors. Um, but uh, Zuikova wears a high-collared fur coat with an ushanka. She has locks of blonde hair going down to her shoulder, flowing freely over the top. And underneath, you can see an ex-service issue Cadian flak jacket. But you know she was never a Cadian Militarum member. Um, she has a shock baton hanging from her hip, but she's currently holding it and a hip-mounted power pack attached to a hotshot last pistol. You know from your time, you've spent years here, um, that she names her bat, she calls her bat in the motivator and her pistol, rebuttal. <laughs> That's great. Love it. And as, uh, as Cameron stands up for a moment, like looking like he's going to quickly get back into work, he isn't given the opportunity. And Zuikova steps in in a flurry of movement and cracks the shock baton directly against his side. A pulse of electricity barks through him and he drops the ground, shaking and convulsing in agony. It is set to a setting that is designed to inflict as much pain as possible. Then she says, get back to work and spits on him on the ground. See, when I said take all the time you need, I meant take all the time you could. You took too long. (laughs) <laughs> like, good no save, emotion. good save. Just, like, no emotion, just like, not even lying. He's just like, yeah, love it. Like, take a minute to breathe because I don't really care. I'm focusing on the minerals. And he's got like this sort of like, like mm. the clockmake thing where it's got like all mm. little different lenses, but they're on like robotic arms. And there's what does Victor look like? Describe uh, his like got sort outfit of like sort of shaggy hair. He's probably like 60s, but he looks a bit younger than he should because he did like one treatment when he was. Mm-hmm. Like made one good discovery that he almost got credit for, but like <laughs> that one time. he's got like a, a thick, like white grey like mustache and one of those sort of like I'm picturing um what's his name from Lord of the Rings the um the old king dude yeah the, the one who's on the throne who was corrupted or yeah yeah him so okay. sort of like his where it's sort of like cool. that, that shape sort there but it's like team. sort of like grey yeah. and bushy like that and sort of like almost almost like a trench coat yeah. sort of thing. The Rohan King. Is that yeah, the Yeah, him. okay, cool. So, so Theoden. Theoden. Thank you. So like almost Someone had like, <laughs> like that sort of thing and then like yeah. but with like shaggy hair and probably thick whitey grey bushy eyebrows and like a like a trench coat and then like this weird like it's not like a full helmet it's like it goes over like one side of his head and is almost like clamped on with all these robotic fingers that have like the different lenses on it. Love it's it. clearly of Mechanicus make it would be yeah. expensive. Um, she leans into you and, and quietly says, um, actually, she says this loudly. Why would she say it quietly? <laughs> she says, um, <clears throat> careful, Victor, you don't want to give them too much. You give them a meal and they take a mile. Isn't that why you're here to make sure that when they try to take a mile, they lose a mile? <laughs> I can't be everywhere at once, Victor. And that is fair enough. Plus, if I give him one second to breathe, maybe he does not try to pocket some things that he might think of import if he thinks he can get away with it. I mean, he's probably not that stupid, but you never know. (laughs) Good. As long as you're aware of them, they are subhuman and they will do anything. So, stay on your guard. Always. Oh, uh, your friend, Benomal, is coming to see you. Yeah. (coughs) And then she turns and walks out. Does he, does he know who that is? Benomal Yarl is the Magos explorator who runs this expedition. Oh, well, in which case he's responsible being, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> so, I, you have a tray of fresh minerals in front of you, and Let's I would like you to make a him. mineral check, challenge level four, on examining them. So that is base three plus int plus skill ranks? Yep. No thing from the And location. you get plus one from your visor, There's your a goggles. a square you could write the roll number in so yep. you don't have to do maths every so time. So that is... Cogent, uh, as, the, as, as the co-founder of Cogent, I made it as uh, mild on maths as possible. <laughs> <laughs> I, I appreciate that. <laughs> That's seven. Beautiful. What was the challenge? Two, three, four, five. It was, it was four. challenge level four. Plus. Excellent. You... Ex- is... More makeup. You examine, <laughs> you examine the um, the mineral sample in front of you. This is a fresh pull from a fresh area of the base, and as your senses get to work, and also you defrost it, you've got tools and a tray. You've got a full scientific getup. Mm-hmm. The mineral gets softer, and you realize with that roll that it is 
a semi heavily frozen and semi sort of fossilized or or decayed organic matter that was streaking through the ice. Organ. I have an idea what this might be out of character. Can I make a general knowledge check to see if sure Victor knows? General knowledge for what it actually is or is what probably it could challenge level six indicate. Oh, that's. Yeah, I mean, you can roll. Destiny point. Oh, well, you for you, advantage. You can. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you Would you like can. to? You, okay, so you get four successes. Now that is a very you good still have to remove check. the destiny point though because yep. you did say um, that before you rolled. And the four <laughs> four is enough to let you know that um, it's definitely not native for flora or fauna. This is, but you you have vaguely heard tell of this, but you don't really know. The thing with the Imperium that sucks is they burn all information and no one knows anything and they deliberately contain that. Yep. So um, This is very unusual. What is unusual? Stands up, straightens himself, straightens the checkers. There is a chittering of multiple uh, limbs skittering into the room. As as a conveyor of dozens of little clawed feet, drags in what was once a human female, but is now a fairly augmented tech priest. Um, however, you know that Benomal Yal, the Explorator, is a fairly low-ranking tech priest who hates this assignment because they seem, by pure luck, to manage to dodge every assignment that actually finds anything that would get them any value or promotion or advancement. Mm. Um, and she resents it, but she perks up slightly as she hears, or as she walks over to you. There, there's like almost this transformation in Victor where he goes from being like this, yeah, whatever, I'm on this crappy assignment to like when the Magus walks in just zoom, like teaches pet sort of transformation. <laughs> I have found something organic in the ice that's vain of almost all looking things in the ice is organic, semi-organic. And your unaugmented senses are certain that it is not remnants of our unfortunate servants. I am certain this is from deeper within the ice where surface uh, contaminant could not get in. And from what I can see, it matches nothing that I know of. Nothing's on this planet. This could be a great find. Or it could be a terrible find. Surrender your findings to me via data burst. (laughs) He... You can transfer. It's basically so. like digitally transferring data. He, he does. He's got the thing there, so he just does that. It's like his pleasure. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Secretly thinking. Ask his name. <laughs> I will study this at length. You have performed your services acceptably. And then she turns and chitters out of the room without chastisement, which is unusual. Uh, Benomal will usually basically dig on everyone at this dig as being like sub-intelligent monkey people yeah. compared to her. Sorry, just a uh, tangent. Uh, you said ass kissing, is that right? Yes. Uh, I heard ass kissing, like a German word. Ass <laughs> 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 kissing. It sort it's, of works perfectly well. Yeah. Anyway, it's not a German word. Or maybe it is. I have no idea. Anyways, I digress. <laughs> All right. So the first time that the, those areas were uncovered uh, was probably a few weeks or months ago. And we're now going to cut across the facility to Sister Hospitaler, who is currently with a mining servant who has managed to hide their pregnancy for a long time. And they're actually giving birth. And you are attending this birth. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, it's that they shouldn't be. Usually that would not be allowed, but yep. they've managed to hide it while they've been working the mines. And um, it's premature. And we won't go through the actual role play of you mm-hmm. delivering a child, but we'll get to the, you, you, they, you know, you assist that process. Do you want me to? I'm going to get you to yep. roll a medical check, uh, challenge level two. Five. Nice. All right. So we we arrive at your room. A boom, earth shake dust comes down. A detonation happens somewhere. And you find yourself looking down at a newly delivered 
child. This is unheard of. It's such a terrible place to bring a child. Why? The woman looks up and says, Is... is are they... Are they well? Are they healthy? I put the baby in her arms and I say, Yes. All right. He is perfectly fine, but you're going you, to have to do something. Okay. At this stage, you say yes, mm. but you haven't inspected the child yet. So I'd like you to mm. inspect the child. So medics or general survival? Eyes. Just look at them. You oh. pull them out. <laughs> okay. I look at the child. You, you sort of have got, you've got them in rugs and stuff and you lift a small portion of the rug and you see their hand is two claws. Their arm, a carapace-like skin that blends with human flesh. Their head has protruded ridge lines on the front of it. They're a mutant at best. Yep. I redact what I said. <laughs> I'm going to cover the baby back up. Mm-hmm. And say, I'm going to get you to make a mm-hmm. general knowledge. Yeah, general knowledge. Oh, but this would still be challenge level six for general knowledge. Yeah, I'll you can make it. a general knowledge check, yeah. challenge level six. You've only got six dice, so it's going to be. I'm going to use a destiny. <laughs> to give advantage. Yep. One, two, you get three, four, four successes as well. Great. You know that that is not good. It would have been two, so it's better. Uh, and I'm going to, you can, I'm going to say though, you can assist post retroactively with your uh, sisters of battle Medicaid knowledge. Okay. If you'd like to. Sure. Why not? So how many dice do you get? Is that seven for Medicaid? Yep. So you can. So if you get a level two victory on your you'll assist. You'll get the six. Yeah. I'm willing to give you that because you have access to more specialized knowledge. Mm. But it has to be five successes for that yeah, to work. So yeah. it's probably not going to matter, but. Oh! So you get five successes. Oh! Holy no shit! Way. Hell yeah! Okay. All yes. right. Five. That's a. It's not often that an assist is so freaking effective. Hey. All right. That's so amazing. you Just glance down, really and training, uh, training kicks in, and the knowledge kicks in, and you remember a lesson. Usually, this knowledge is forbidden, but you are a member of the Order's Hospitaller, and in a in a frontier world, you have training to detect and and recognize things. And you immediately recognize that that is not a mutant, that is not chaos touched, but that is a xeno human hybrid, and it is an abhuman of an unacceptable level in the Imperium. Yep. There is only one thing that needs to be done. Yep. I wrap the baby back up and uh, I turn to the woman uh, and say, Unfortunately, your fetus has suffered implications. They have not survived. Um, I'm going to get you to roll a a destiny check oh. related to your religion. A 20 is a positive outcome for her. Mm-hmm. A one is a negative outcome. For the woman or for, for me? Both. For both. Okay. For both. Right. A five. Oh, okay. It wouldn't be 40K if it were happy. <laughs> <laughs> so your immediate compulsion... Your compulsion. Now, this isn't saying your character has to do it, but every part of your your pious training tells you that you need to execute both right now. Like this both. is yep. both yep. the mother and Ooh. child need yep. to be shot. Now, yep. I'm not saying your character is the sort of person who'd want to do that, but if you don't do it, you're definitely going to be compelled. Again, you don't have to do it, but your training is telling you, every inch of you is telling you that either you need to or you need to get the guard or you need to get Benomal Yarl. You need to get someone of authority or do it yourself because this is an unacceptable situation. Okay, is anyone in the room with me aside from her? Uh, there's probably the a couple of people, a couple of miners, but um, and but no one, no one would know what you. Know. No one knows what you know. Okay. I tell her that what I said before. Her baby hasn't survived. Mm-hmm. Does she respond? Yes, yeah, she immediately like a guttural, deep, horrifying mm-hmm. um, explosion of yeah sadness just pours out I, of her. I'm going to hand the baby off to someone else that's mm-hmm. just standing there and make sure that the wrap is kind of kept really tight because as far as they're aware, it's not alive. I'm going to administer her with um, like a poison or something that's basically going to kill her because I think that, yeah, this is against everything. That I'm assuming you'll be coaching her into 
Like this, uh, this will help. Hey, let's do it. Yeah. So she's sobbing. What do you do? Yeah, so I start preparing a, a sedative and say, like, you have suffered as well. This was not a normal birth. I'm, I'm going to have to give you something just to help relax. Cool. And make, the make a persuasion check. Challenge level three. She's distraught, but she's... Is it a persuasion or a deception? Just saying. Sorry, Jen. Jen's like, oh, do you have more dice in persuasion? It's oh, both. I'm so sorry. It's gonna. It's going to be both. Okay. So you make the persuasion check challenge level three. Yep. Uh, four. Yep. Okay. And then we'll make an opposed deception check. Um, so the persuasion is just to administer medication to someone. The deception mm -hmm. is what is the medication. Gotcha. Um, so she is going to have base three. So you're challenging nothing. So, so you just have to have a success. As long as you get a success, you will deceive. So with deception? With whatever your deception is. Which is your base three. You got one. Two, two successes. Nice. Um, and then I'm going to get you... And then to continue the torrent of dice We're rolls... Like, I'm Did gonna you get you. Because you've got one in intelligence. Oh, wait, no, just yeah, deception's intelligence. Isn't With deception. Yeah. Is your oh, no, it is you're right. Four. It is four. Doesn't matter. You pass. I'm gonna get you to make a Medicaid check, a medical check, to see how successfully you've concocted this. This is a torrent of checks, but it's important. Uh, Two, three. I was gonna say challenge level is three skilled. So, um, yeah. She is sobbing, but she seems um, desirous of the medicine um, to help her calm. Mm -hmm. And as you inject it, it flows into her. Shortly after, um, she sort of starts to get a bit limp, limp and numb as you inject a massive amount of sedative into yeah. her. I'm going to just and sing. And then she passes out. Yeah, I'll just sing a hymn while she's passing just to calm mm -hmm. her, to make sure she passes peacefully. I'm going to roll Destiny Roll. Uh, we get a seven. Oh, it was almost a one. Yeah. <laughs> she passes. So yeah. Right. Her eyes are flittering as she's about to fall. She'll fall unconscious before she dies. Mm -hmm. She's about to fall unconscious. And with this destiny roll of seven, just before she slips into unconsciousness, there is a cry from the baby in your arms. Mm -hmm. And for a split second, her eyes twist open and she looks like a moment of like, what? But then just just falls into unconsciousness oh, and the baby begins to cry in your arms. Okay. And you saw there was a brief moment of clarity in her eyes that something's knew, wrong, yeah. that something's wrong, that you've lied to her. I say a very quick little prayer for the her. The people in the room all look to you, look around. There's three other people in the room. They all stare at you. And one of them says, sister, is it a miracle? The baby lives. This is no miracle. Uh, I need to talk to someone. Oh, we wouldn't dare question. Of course, sister. You know in the stationing of things, you stand above most people that aren't in the organisational hierarchy of the militia. You are respected. You are revered. You are, mm. you're, a, you're a nun in a really religious town. People treat you with deference and respect. What was the name of the um, leader of the expedition? Uh, the leader of the expedition is Benomal Yal, the explorator, and the head guard is Zuikova Pelia. Okay. Um, I turn to one of the guards and say, get me, get me Zui. There isn't a guard in the room, I said. So there's only the three miners. Pop my head around the corner. Um, you pop your head around the corner and... Oh, sorry. There is a, there's another person in charge. I, I forgot. Agamedes, Agamedes, who you haven't met yet, he's the human in charge of the mining expedition. So it's kind of like a co... Ah. It's a co thing. But Nomal Yal is the Mag Magus Explorator attached to it. Agamedes is like the administrative director. Okay. I turn to the other person in the room mm. and say, get me Agamedes immediately. Oh, you want me to bring him here, miss? Yes. Uh, yes, of course. And um, he scurries out of the room. Uh, at this point, Bron uh, and Curly are sl swaggering down a corridor. You see a flustered looking miner burst out of a corridor and sort of, <laughs> um, here, hey, and turns to you. Have, you. have you seen Agamedes? The sister wants him. Oh, uh, let me uh, let me think for a second. Have I? <laughs> um, no. Okay. But you are going to report to Agamedes that your yeah. detonation has been a success. I was actually heading that way right now. Uh, I think I know where he is. I, forg forgive me, Lord. And you notice the chains around his ankles and his hands. And he says, Zukova will beat me senseless if I'm down on my quotas today. So do you mind passing it on? Sister, take him to the sister. And then he points down a corridor. She's just in there. Sure can. 
you go fix your quotas. So you know you're not a pen, you're not a penal, yeah. you're a paid man. So mm. yeah, you know that he's like, I'll do whatever the sister tells me, but I'll wrap the punishment for doing it. Mm. It's kind of in this horrible circumstance yeah. where they can be bossed around, but all their different bosses will punish them for doing um, not what Anything. they told them to do, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and no one will reward them. Yep. So he he's like, Th- thank you for your kindness, sir. And then he rushes back to the mines. All right, Curly, uh, let's go see what I got to say. All right, let's go. We wander off to find Agamedes. All right, you head. Uh, just worth asking because obviously I'm a, in the mining and ex- sort of demolition of what he has. Uh, he's looking after, so I'm assuming I have a little more to do with him. Uh, yeah, you report to him directly. Yeah. Uh, he sort of tells you what needs to be blown up. Yeah. Uh, you know Agamenes, he is, uh, he's the mining director. He's a lot more optimistic. Uh, he's quite happy because of uh, mineral worth. Uh, where Benomal seems kind of depressed about the whole situation because there's no like architect that's going to suddenly vault them up into the next echelon. Mm-hmm. For Agamenes, who's a human administrator just a successful expedition uncovering resources for the Imperium like is a job well done. And every tick on his resume that says job well done is a bigger and more lucratively mm. paid job. Yeah. So for him, success is just running a good operation. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you head out of the mines and for the first time you're hit with the blustery wall of uh, wind and snow as you see a large Imperial um, land train uh, sitting there with a cargo container there are a few excavated, free now freestanding ruins, as well as the rooftops of other ruins poking out of the snow that haven't been dug down to yet. And um, a bit further off, there is a bunker-like prefabricated structure that was dropped off by a dropship, mm-hmm. uh, as well as a large, a cup, a few uh, sort of like <coughs> all-terrain vehicles, not a ride-on thing, but like an enclosed uh, motorized vehicle. It's like a, basically the equivalent to a, a space jeep. It's like a space jeep. Yeah. Um, and yeah, they're around this thing and you know that he runs the expedition from out of there. Okay. I go to the space jeep. Um, while this has been happening, uh, I'm going to say that... Um, the mineral reports... Probably also about time to be taken to Agamedes. So the same time as this is going on, Victor has just you know, written his report. You've passed off the information to Benomal. Now you're going to pass off the mundane information to Agamedes. And you also step out into the snow. And you find yourself standing next to um, a rattling and a man who you've worked with occasionally. Uh, you know you know, you know, know enough of the important people. So know you, you each know other's names and Victor. passingly. You work professionally. He mm. tells you, you put the charges there. I want to do this. Hey, do it's it. Rock Boy. How you doing? I would really prefer if you didn't call me that, Bron. Well, uh, you love the rock so much. I like breaking them. You like looking after them and caressing them. Sure, if you will go with that. <laughs> From uh, down at your hip. Precious little Rock Boy. Rock Hugger. I like, maybe we'll call him Rock Hugger, shouldn't we, girly? Oh, I like it. Please don't. Please, my friend. <laughs> All right, Rock Boy. French. Oh, sorry, Rock Hugger. That was the one you preferred. Sorry, about, sorry to pass you. I'm on the way to Agamedes, so I'll catch you around. As am I. It would be much better if I could give him a data dump, but unfortunately I must hand in it manually on the... Okay, I think I keep going French. I walk ahead as you keep talking. <laughs> Walks on after. Yeah. I'm assuming uh, that... Uh, uh, make a perception check, Victor... As you are, you are clapped. Uh, you are clapped on the hip, very uh, friendlyly, by a halfling or a rattling. You completely Ooh. do not succeed. Nope. Make a perception check. All um, right. All right. Challenge level is four. Okay, so I still felt it. You felt like a uh, like a pat on the like a clap on the <laughs> thing. Uh, I got nothing. No successes. Yeah. Okay. Cool. It's like it, like quietly fuming, quietly fuming, smooths himself down. He is a professional. We have to take a aside because one thing that never comes up in our games, uh, you know, one shots and we usually don't bother with, but we actually have to today. Okay. Commerce level. What commerce oh. level are your characters? Right. Oh, we, we have to discuss this. this. I have okay. no idea how to establish okay. this. So the base commerce level is assigned between two and four by me. Uh, and I'm going to assign um, both Victor and Sister... Al- uh, sorry, Sister Alexandra and Bron 
I'm going to assign your Calm Ice level at two, mm-hmm. uh, which means you get a free skill point in something you have no skill points in. There is a beeping device. <laughs> there is a beeping. Oh, yeah. sorry. Um, that's my watch. I forgot that I had an alarm on Did it. Did your alert detonator going off? Yeah. So I'm, just like, <laughs> so I'm going to assign Oh, it. shit, no one's live. <laughs> Victor, I'm going to assign it three. All so right. the reason that Sister Alexandra has a low commerce level is because as a hospitaler, she's basically only lives on like yeah. ration stipends and pay. Like it, don't you don't really get paid. You get like, an, like a, an amount. But now you guys get to pick. You can either subtract or add one. If you add one, you take a quirk of wealth. If you subtract one, you gain another skill point in something that has no skill points in it. Okay. I'm just going to leave it. Leave it at two. Yeah. Well, you, he you just know, you, does his job. Uh, yeah, you can I'll just leave it, leave of course. Them. You leave it at three? Yep. Put one in deception. Two. You gave me two. Oh, sorry, two. Yep. I'll leave mine at three. Yep. Put the bonus one in deception. I'm going to leave it two. I'm happy. Cool. Okay. Mm-hmm. None of us are quirky. That's, we just get paid to do our job. It's fine. You're also, you know what? I feel. I feel like I'm gonna. Ch- sorry, I'm gonna give Bron a, th- a three. Two is too low. I'm gonna give you a three. Okay. I, you are paid. You're not penal. Right. I'm actually, the poor one is gonna be Sister Alexandra, who only operates on like the alms and charity that people would give. I don't need worldly possessions. <laughs> you're basically in that situation where you you're always provided probably better than everyone else. Yeah. But you don't have choice, and you don't pay for it you just get given your like sistersly yep. rations by your uh, sister superior you ask, what is the quirk of what is a quirk of wealth it's just another table you roll on it's basically mm. like a disabling like characteristic, characteristic but related to money yeah it's a it's a newer feature in the latest system yeah. no, I, don't, I don't think you'll have a quirk of wealth yep okay, okay. <clears throat> so <clears throat> kung, 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 big knock on the door the door slay uh, big bang 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 knock on yeah. the door Victor you're standing there looking at the door getting knocked and you your eyes dart to the like <laughs> little hand thing that just goes boop and just slides the door open but he's knocking on this big metal, like <laughs> prefabricated steel structure door. Do I say something? Or do you just open the door? I've just walked past slightly, just shove my way in <laughs> and just pr- like making eye contact. Just <laughs> I don't make any eye contact back. I just assume my knock did that. <laughs> <laughs> the door slides open. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Curly, Poor Victor. This is what <laughs> Everyone else see. gets the credit. Curly cracks out um, the 40k equivalent of a cigar and starts smoking it and leaning against with snow blustering, pulls his coat up and mm. says, um, I don't much want to talk to the boss, so go on. Oh, I, find I would prefer not <clears throat> to uh, inhale your smoke. Cool. And you two head into the building. You ain't been down in the mines very much, have you? No, that is your job. And I would prefer to keep it that way. <laughs> There are multiple, uh, there's probably about three or four administrative clerks uh, and there's also a guard in here. And you see Agamedes Sutra, who's dressed in finery beyond what anyone else is wearing. He has a, but still definitely not rich by any means, but he has a very nice winter coat over some very proper, definitely the sort of person who, who dresses for the job they want more than the job they have. Afternoon, sir. Oh, Wonderful. Uh, you have reports for me then. I hear, well, I felt the ground rumble. Mm, uh, very healthy expedition. Things seem to be progressing nicely for once. Wonderful. Hey, excellent. Uh, and the mineral findings? Uh, yes, uh, I have uh, already passed them on to the Megos, uh, but uh, I have found some interesting things. Unfortunately, it took some time to transcribe them and hands them over. Cool. Takes There's some uh, interesting organics in there. And, uh, excellent. Anything else to report to me? Oh, uh, something about, um, oh, Sisto wants to speak to you. Uh, so something else interesting discovered, apparently. He seems, so, um, Agamede seems kind of annoyingly dismissive of your report that you gave him. Uh, and Victor, you're kind of have that compulsion. T- like, he says, okay, take me to him, Bron. And starts walking with you. And you have that compulsion to be like, walk with me, talk with me. Like you want to keep pushing up the work you've done as he just walks off. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> One day, somebody will recognize Victor. And you're you're quite used to having to kind of follow people around and like try and get your point across. So you're probably compelled to do that now. I follow along. Um, did you look at the report? I said there were some very interesting findings. Unusual organics. Uh, 
Right. So why did the sister want to see me? Oh, no, no. Uh, it's all a bit of a kerfuffle at the moment. Everyone seems a little bit distracted. But my God. And as we walk around and I sort of indicate at the uh, ancient things that were unearthing and mm. there's probably another distant explosion somewhere. I'm like, oh, is not this a thing of beauty that we make? Absolutely. Unco- it's uncovering. It's easy rock out, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Un- uncovering these one. Wonderful. Um, it's just, you know... I never get to say this to you enough, but Bron, I just wanted to say, and at this point you get into the expedition, I'm glad to have one of the angel touched with us here. It's good to know that a man of your faith and closeness to the, the ultramarines, he, he, he's one of the few people who actually has kind of bought your bullshit. Yeah, I yeah. love it. Um, and, and he treats you way better than he should. Yeah, I uh, rest my hand on the, uh, the pummel of my space marine uh, pear knife dagger yeah. <laughs> and uh, I nod and I say look uh, the emperor protects her and he had to send someone to protect this expedition um, and you saturated eye roll <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and he heads down some corridors and gets into the room with sister Alexandra mm. the other miners have cleared out now you're alone dead woman on a table um and, oh. and he walks in the door. There's doors in the, the the more established parts of the mine. It slides shut behind you, like and closes. Well, uh, sister, honored. I give him a little bow. Um, I will quickly just say what yes, hello. sister Alexandra looks like. Um, so she is dark skinned and white hair, like most sisters do. So they always have their hair in a bob, um, and she has a aquila underneath her eye as well. Cool, like yeah. a tattoo. Yeah. What brings me here? There's a sleeping lady, and what are you holding? This is an abomination. Yeah, uh, I, I should say so. To think that the penal servants believe they have time to Procreate. create that on my watch. I shall, uh, I shall have Zakova double their punishments. Sir, any indiscretions. There is more. And then I kind of gesture him to come closer. He walks closer. And then Victor I... Victor tries to, like, edge closer as well. It's mm-hmm. something interesting. You can all... Yeah, you can all kind of mm-hmm. crowd And around. I reveal slowly. Ah, is, ah, ah, and he slaps the baby. Like, he just <laughs> slaps its face. Just, like, Whoa. slaps it down away from you. And he's just Everyone. like... Ah, 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 and he rubs his hand on it. And he's just like, disgusting. Ah, it's disgusting. Sir, compose is it, yourself. Is it dead yet? Or is no, it's still alive, still so it starts alive. screaming. Uh, I would like to stomp on it. Well, it's still in her hands. I thought, oh, didn't he, I thought you said he smacked no, it. What's I'm the, assuming you what's didn't What's the like, assumed let it response of, like, would most people respond like that? Is well, that a fairly common? And do, do okay. people recognize it imagine, as cursed or Zeno? Imagine or? you are in the church in, like, the 1300s and someone just walks in and says, God, I just want to, I love Satan. I, I've been making out with <laughs> Satan. I've been casting spells. Here's my spell book. And you walk up to the, like, it yeah. is like blasphemy of the highest order. It is revolting. Yep. Fuck is it still he, he didn't slap the baby to the ground, but he's like, he slapped it in the head <laughs> like pushed and it pushed away. it away from yeah. him. Oh, hold Violently. On to it. Like, it's not a pleasant thing. That oh, hold did. on to it. Mm. It's, it's screeching. Sir. Why is that thing still alive on my base? Is just, that a Xenos? These are both my questions. I believe it's a, a mixture of both. And it came out of... And he looks over at uh, the dead woman. Her. That is correct. At least she did not survive childbirth. He, um, he starts unclipping a leather pouch on his waist that has a finely wrought last pistol in it and reaching for his gun. I kind of look at him concerned and say, Sir. Make a persuasion check. I'm just going to pat mine just in, like, instinctually. Yeah, everyone's like going for their arms. Challenge level two. Nothing. Not persuasive. <laughs> he, he draws the gun and he said and and he says, Your <sighs> composes himself. Destiny roll for The baby? The baby? Yeah. No, I'm gonna say destiny roll for you. Twelve. So it's not too bad. He says he calms himself for a moment with a gun and he says, I I have the utmost respect, sister, for your natural inclinations towards nurturing and healing the arms of the people. The people. 
That is an abomination and shall be killed. I wholeheartedly agree, sir. But I don't suggest such primitive matters. I can... Should I get Simegos? He might be interested in this. <laughs> He's going to... It's a corpse, of course. He, probably. He looks... Dest- another Destiny roll for that. 12 again. Okay, so he says... Maybe. Uh, but... If we silence this here, it ends here. And if the Magos gets her claws on it, she might turn it into a field day. I personally think we should focus on our job. Do you really want the Mechanicus taking over our dig? No, sir. I say we just slay a Xenos and call it done. Problem solved. Done enough to be messy. So I've got the data <coughs> dump thing. Is it possible like contact the Magus wirelessly? No. With you, you could vox them, but they'd know. You have basically you could calm them, but you'd have to speak. Be like a phone. <laughs> Not a good way to make friends in the room. <laughs> no. Then we are in agreement, gentlemen. Sure. Who would you have do it, sir? This bears investigation though. And unfortunately, a sister. Did anyone else know about this? Uh, I there was only the, the guy in the room that but was. But they didn't see the baby. They only okay. heard it. You've had it wrapped up. True. So the identity of the child is concealed. And I will I will deal with the other loose ends. And he walks over and draws his gun and aims it at the mother who's laying dead on the thing, but he doesn't know that. He has he just thinks he's sleeping. Do you react? Yeah, I turn, I say, she's already deceased. Uh, your pragmatism. I should have assumed, sister. Sorry. Um, now, it seems we have a bit of a compact. No one outside this room should hear of this. But I would have you gather some information for me. And to do that, you need to go into the into town, into the starport. As for that, can I trust that you'll deal with it, sister? Or shall I deliver the Emperor's mercy? Although it is too good for such an abomination. I believe that we should all bear witness to these events so we can truly know that whatever this thing is remains dead here. Yes, go with. I nod in agreement. Uh, I can go. I go get another needle. Oh, you're going to use a so This is almost like a ceremony now. <laughs> yeah, or like yeah. a gas or something. Yeah. Something, same deal. Do you want to shoot her a little squeamish no, I about Because it. it's a baby. Shooting it will be the most pleasant passing. Okay, can I shoot it not with a huge, like just like a... I'm holding my giant knife. <laughs> he, okay, oh, sorry. He make, a turkey um, here. You are smart enough to know that probably of anything in the room, the mm. most efficient thing to kill this... Monster. I'm just going to call it a monster mm. because we don't want to... It is actually a monster. Yeah, it's yeah. like it's got claws. And it's like... Ah, it's got like part of a baby's face and it's crying like a human baby. But it's... It's a it's Xenos. An alien. It's a mutant. It's an alien <laughs> hybrid mutant. Mm. Um, is the last pistol because it will literally shoot right. a like 20 cent coin size cauterizing laser beam that just goes <laughs> straight Does through it. Agamedes have that? He has, a, he has a highly wrought last pistol. I pass it to him then. He clutches an imperial uh, Aquila necklace on his chest. Uh, he, you you go to pass it to him because you can. He you says hold it he just says the- drop it. Okay, I'll put it on the floor. <laughs> oh, you put it on the floor. Okay, and it starts to like move a little bit, and he just last I pistol a few straight to his forehead and just pulls the trigger. And there's a smoking. There's a just a whine and a hiss and a brief like. <laughs> noise and then this like purple ichor oozes out of its head and there's a steaming uh steam from where the last gun has like melted a half meter into the ice behind its head question Mm. does that purple ichor does it bear remnants of the other observations that victor and bron have had make a perception check both of you can i put some of it in a vial just to have challenge level sure yeah uh challenge level 
three. You got one. One. I've only got three dice. Cool. I'm going to use a destiny point. For advantage? Mm-hmm. Okay. Ooh. Three. Three successes. Well done. You, Bron, draws the conclusion that uh, that, that Icarus organic congealed goop is somewhat similar, but vaguely similar mm. to some of the streaks that have been reported and you've seen in the ice collections and stuff like that. I kneel down and scoop on the tip of my marine knife mm -hmm. this ichor and stand up and hold it fascinated. I almost dismissed it and then all of a sudden I had this flash through my head of like the, the substance, the vein we found in the ice. Hold that up and look at Agamedes, this I've seen, I've seen this, I've heard of this recently. There's more of this, maybe more of them. Oh, so that's not an attractive thought. But there should be more of them. So, I mean, it did not <laughs> impregnate this woman yeah. by itself. How did it get there? <sighs> Where was she working? There uh, is certainly investigation to be done, sir. Yes. So. I'll have you go into town and bring me some things. Yes. Head out immediately. Go. And don't tell anyone. Yes, sir. The and owner protects. He quickly scurries <laughs> on a data slate and hands you a data slate. And then we'll pick it up in the next episode. All right. Wow. That was fun. Yep. Do you know what else is fun? Hanging patrons. out and enjoying our patrons. Yay. Thank you so much for our patrons for support. Now, Lachlan, we read out our patrons. The first yeah. one is, oh, no, error 404, <laughs> patron not found. The that's, dark a, that's a real shame. <laughs> dark Fox. Uh, tickle Dog. Professor X1718. Nearly, nearly well, listen. Ryan Ayo by now. Earth Angel Sarah. Nick. And AJ Macy. Thank, Thank you, all you all so much, much for your support. Thank Yay, you. Thanks. And uh, we have a part two to get to very soon, which you will see next week. Uh, mm -hmm. But if you want to see our, the two parts which are recorded in one session fortnightly mm -hmm. on the Thursdays, you can join us on Twitch. Uh, and also remember there's a podcast. So if you watch mm -hmm. this on YouTube and you want to enjoy on Spotify or iTunes or whatever it is you enjoy podcasts on, go check that out. Podcasts but otherwise, that, yeah. Uh, yeah, that, that brings us to the end of part one. Yay. Thanks, see you guys. Dun -dun.